We're excited to welcome you to this session on such an important topic. You know, the patient is at the center of our work, and staffing is an essential dimension of the entire patient experience. So balancing nursing workloads is a key performance imperative for hospitals and healthcare systems today. Dr. Welton, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lily, and, and, and uh, my personal greetings to everyone on the, uh, the webinar today. Um, staffing, from a nursing standpoint, is something that's, that's dear to our hearts and something that we really need to begin to think about in its broadest, um, in its broadest terms. Um, yes, we need to be able to make sure we have the right amount of nurses for a given uh, set of patients, but it's more than just, just staffing. You have to begin to look at who's the actual nurse caring for a patient, um, how efficient and effective are our staffing systems and our nursing care delivery systems in meeting our overall uh, clinical as well as operational needs? Uh, how well is the system performing? And what is, as Lily said, Lily said, um, what is the cost of that care? And ultimately, I'm going to pose a question. Uh, and we'll go through this in a, in a few minutes. So, what is the added value of each nurse caring for a patient? Um, next slide. One of the things that uh, we know, and for those of us who've been in in, uh, in nursing for long enough. Um, especially in the inpatient environment, we know that, that patients are sicker, they're much more complex care, and the care is quicker, as, um, as, as we said already. So that presents a number of different challenges for us to be, to be able to, um, to modify and adapt our systems in order to provide optimum care. Next slide. One of the things that we do know, and this is where the cost piece comes in, if we look at, at nursing care as either a staffing ratio or nursing hours per patient day, there's a direct relationship between how many patients a nurse cares for, uh, his or her wage, and the overall cost per patient day for a particular patient. Um, the reason this is important because right now with, with, within our healthcare finance system, nursing care is invisible. It's basically just a room and board uh, fee and it's not reimbursed directly. So that this provides some challenges from an operational standpoint, from a finance standpoint, because the staffing ratios are directly related to the total cost of, of nursing care in a particular setting, and how does that relate to reimbursement? Uh, next slide. One of the things that uh, we know, and it, this is just two studies that I was involved with, and there's several others that that um, um, that are important to note, but that any particular patient has different care needs. For example, even the same patient has uh, more or less care depending upon the day of stay. Say a, 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 a acute, acute pneumonia patient comes in on the first day needs much more nursing care than on the second or third day, assuming that patient's improving and getting better. Um, we know uh, on the left side, that is a study. We actually had nurses um, actually um, uh, monitor and, and, and record their actual time for each individual patient. And uh, this is uh, just a single uh, academic medical center but we can see the wide variety of patients uh, on average receive between 5 and 15 or, or, or 10, uh, 10 hour per, uh, per day difference depending upon their overall acuity. And even though that the mean 9.7 hours is typical of an academic medical center, which includes um, which included a, the step down care, we see an awful lot of variability. On the right also, we see a lot of variability. This is uh, all the hospitals, acute care hospitals in Massachusetts. We actually look at their staffing patterns and see why variety of variability. That's the importance as far as being able to understand what the patients need, their acuity, and the overall amount of nursing care time for each individual patient. Next slide. So let, let me pose a question. Our typical way of approaching nurse staffing is either to look at it, uh, for example, at midnight census, how many patients, uh, ratios, uh, nursing hours per patient day, and all of these measures are an average of many nurses over many patients and basically uh, uses a single statistic to, um, to um, identify what the nursing care is. And that's an average. So what is an average patient? Um, when we begin to think about it, the, the tools, the measures that we're using right now to understand staffing and changes in staffing are antiquated that we need to come up with better ways to approach this and uh, begin to have uh, better ways of identifying the actual need and demand for nursing care as well as the actual care that's delivered by each nurse. Next slide. Um, this is a study we did also back uh, at, at, on the East Coast. One of the problems we have is, and it was it, it was identified in that, that previous slide, that there's there's no alignment between the actual care, nursing care a patient receives, what's actually billed for care, which is a room and board charge, and the actual reimbursement, which is 
based on a patient diagnosis. This just shows some of the, the problems when we actually use medical diagnosis or, or medical severity as a way to explain nursing care. Sometimes it works fairly well. For example, on the, to do, uh, the two green highlighted areas, we can see that as the severity level, and this is within the all-payer refined DRG goes up, that the nursing intensity, the actual hours of care went up. But then there are other times when the nursing care is high and stays high and doesn't really vary very much. So that's important for us to understand that medical care and nursing care are different, even though we're caring for the same patient, that there are different requirements from both the medical and a nursing uh, standpoint. We know a lot about the medical care as far as the diagnosis, the procedures, the testing and things, the labs, the, the pharmaceuticals that, are, that are, are used in patient care, but very little, if anything, about the individual care, uh, nursing care that a patient receives. Uh, next slide. This was a study where we actually, um, like the, uh, the MUSC study, we're actually able to allocate nursing care time and dollars to each individual patient. This is uh, five hospitals, 50,000 patients. I can't remember how many nurses. But what's interesting is, is depending upon the length of stay, the amount of uh, nursing care hours varied. For example, patients that stayed one day required much more care per hour, uh, per, per 24 hours, than patients stayed four or five days. The other interesting thing about this, this, uh, this graph is that after three days of stay, older patients, 65 years and older, needed about half to about three quarters of an hour more care than the younger patients. The horizontal line is the, the average of all these, which is a proxy measure of the nursing care hours per patient day. So you can see in this, uh, in this the, the results of this study that using nursing hours per patient day really hides a lot of important and clinically and operationally meaningful variation in nursing care that is important for us to begin to think about how we can capture that, identify it, measure it, and then adopt that within uh, our individual nursing care delivery systems. On the very right, we can see that there's a, 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 group, a small group of patients that stayed a long time in the setting, and it's, it's, it's classic across the United States. These are some of the outlier patients that even though they represented 20% of the nursing uh, of the patients that receive nursing care, they consume half, 50.4% of the total nursing care hours and dollars associated with that. So that outlier population requires another challenge within the inpatient settings. Next slide. This is another approach. Um, uh, Dr. Sharon Pappas, she's the chief nurse for uh, Centura here in the Denver area and her, was involved with this study. Even though it was just a single unit, it was a, a surgical uh, transplant unit, they took the, uh, the approach of identifying risk and that was linking uh, not only um, staffing levels but assignment uh, and, and the overall burden of the assignment based on different types of risk. For example, uh, who were patients at a high fall risk, who received a transplant or was in hepatic failure and in that, particular set, in that particular setting, it was very meaningful then to begin to adjust the assignment level, not just the staffing, but the actual assignment. We can see before and after they, um, they uh, introduced that intervention that across the board, they saw reductions in pressure ulcers, falls, um, urinary tract infections, and bloodstream infections. So again, similar to uh, Jack Neal speaking next, uh, some of his work, it kind of begins to look at that at a, a much uh, uh, individual level uh, in a single unit and the importance in understanding what are some of the things that drive not only nursing care, but the outcomes of that nursing care. Next slide. Now let's talk a little bit about nursing care value. Um, I'm involved um, with a project that uh, actually comes out of University of Minnesota a School of Nursing, uh, addressing big data in nursing care. And this is one of the, uh, the expert panels, the, the work groups. And one of the things, the questions we're, we're posing is how do we actually measure nursing care value? And what was interesting as we began uh, two years ago to begin to conceptualize that and identify it, how, how to measure that, we had to change that around and begin to think about how can we measure the, the value of each individual nurse caring for a patient. So again, as we begin to think about how to model that, we had to begin to look at the nursing care in, uh, in direct relationship between the outcomes of that care as well as the cost or the price of that care. Next slide. So it's beginning to think about that um, from a staffing level. Staffing is talking about uh, a group of nurses and a group of patients. But from a value-based care standpoint, we're looking at each individual, individual nurse as a provider of care at the bedside and that we measure nursing care as that link between an individual nurse and an individual patient. We call this an encounter, but in a acute care setting, we would typically call this an assignment. Uh, if we were in other settings like home health care, it would be a home visit. Or in a clinic, it would be a clinic visit and so forth. And this is a data-driven 
um, uh, focus in the sense that we're looking at not only that, that, that link between a nurse and a patient, but also differences in times and uh, taking that data and organize it in a way we can begin to look at not only staffing and assignment, but also cost, quality, performance, effectiveness, all those things that we talked about at the beginning here. And ultimately, our goal is to come up with new tools, new, uh, uh, much more data-driven and data-rich tools that can help us identify business intelligence and analytics that can help us in a real-time environment begin to look at nursing care in a much different way. The next slide, please. I'm just going to put this uh, up. This will be in the slide set. And this was uh, published in, in January, Nursing Economics. This is just the way, the model that we proposed out of our expert panel to extract the data in the electronic health record, model it in such a way that we can ask and answer many different questions. Now, one of the, one of the, 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 the good news is that we spent a lot of effort installing electronic healthcare uh, systems, healthcare records, especially in, in acute care. So the data is being collected so that the burden to actually collect the kind of data we did back in on the East Coast at, at MUSC, that's essentially eliminated. The challenge now is how do we get the data out of the computer and use that for many other different purposes. So that's what this model is, is just a way to extract the data in a certain way, a certain form. It retains that relationship on the right side between a nurse, his or her credentials, experience level, and so forth with the individual patient on the left-hand side. And then in the middle, what were some of the problems, the interventions that nurses were doing and then the outcomes of that. So it's a way to, to answer uh, how do we measure nursing care value in, uh, in using the actual da uh, data. It's vendor agnostic. It's not uh, uh, related to a specific software program. And it's setting neutral that we can use this in many different settings, not only acute care, but um, outside care, uh, home health care, clinic, and so forth. Uh, next, slide, uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm just going to basically just talk about nursing finance real quickly. We really can't talk about staffing without really talking about the costs of care. Nurses uh, represent 25 to 30% of a hospital's operating budget. That's a huge amount of cost. And by using the data that I just mentioned, it gives us the ability to look at the nursing input, the nursing component of the business of caring. So when we talk about staffing, as, as that slide a few minutes ago showed, that there's a relationship between the actual nursing time and the actual nursing dollars that are expended for a particular patient, whether you, you, you calculate as a ratio or nursing hours per patient day. But if we're trying to orient ourselves towards value, we have to look at how we expend those dollars wisely and how that's related to the overall cost and quality of the care that we're expending wherever it may occur. Um, when we have those data, we can begin to look at nursing care in a very, very different way. I'm just going to sort of uh, put that plant seed today and, and sort of put that out as a teaser. But for those of you, especially at the bedside, if we have the ability, we do have the, the theoretical ability to go ahead and measure care at that individual nurse patient level, but how can we use those data to actually either get more staff, re realign or re re uh, reassign nurses, and begin to think about how we can do a better job to optimize nursing care, not just cut nursing care costs, but optimize our costs in relationship to the quality and the outcomes of that care. Next slide. Um, just real briefly mentioned, um, we're doing a pilot study here in Denver uh, with some colleagues at Denver Health. One of the problems in measuring nursing care, and especially performance, is it's, it's basically a black box. We know that broadly that there are relationships between low staffing levels and poor outcomes, but what does that mean on a minute-by-minute by minute basis? So one of the things we came up with is, is, is using some existing data, of these, these fire hose or these big data sets, and one of the, the largest fire hose worth of nursing data is medication administration. Um, we, we calculated on average nurses are giving 1,000 meds per year um, at this institution. It was three million over two years. And on a typical day, at one of the units was getting five to 600 meds. So again, it's this large data set. We have time points. So what we're doing is we're looking at the relationship between nursing workload and the actual uh, 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 delay in, in administering meds or when we get outside this boundary, the plus or minus 30, 60 minutes. So again, it's a way for us to begin to think about coming up with new quality metrics, either performance and, and quality, in relationship to the real-time environment, the staffing levels, the assignment levels, changes in patient acuity, and so forth. And from that, if we're successful, we be, we're, we're thinking down the line as far as being able to look at things like um, being able to manage a patient's pain and using pure opioids, other types of interventions, glycemic control, ambulation. So all these are components of good nursing care. And how can we use these real-time data in relationship to the workload, the staffing levels, and so forth to help us identify good nursing care and, and outcomes of that care? 
next uh, next slide. So this is just a quick summary. Um, I'll just leave it for you to ponder at this point. I really want to transition to the other presenter. So let me